This week's Brick Clicking Quick Review is on set number 10300. It is the Back to the Future Time Machine. In this set, you get one large instruction book, as well as you get the traditional UCS plaque with two minifigures. You get a hoverboard, a plutonium case, an alternate license plate, as well as this one here has two other alternate builds we'll go through as well. And then you have the time machine. First up, we'll take a look at the plaque here. On the plaque, you'll see it has the breakdown of the time machine, the manufacturer, which was uh, Doc Brown, as well as the 1.21 gigawatts of power it takes to power it, and the activation speed is at 88 miles per hour. The two minifigures we get, we get the Marty McFly, as well as Doc Brown in his uh, yellow suit from the Back to the Future Part 2 movie, as well as they both do have alternate heads which we'll see in a second here. Just have to take off their hair pieces. We have Doc Brown's classic glasses and a, looks like an angry Marty McFly. Next up, we're, we'll take a look at the DeLorean. On the DeLorean itself, or the time machine, we have the classic gullwing doors. I know a lot of people have been saying that it, the doors are a bit heavy and they don't exactly stay up on their own. As you can see on mine, it does fall down as well. When I first built it, I guess the, the friction uh, Technic pins that were in there were, were, were stiff enough that they, they held the door, but after a few times of opening it, they do no, do no longer stay up. We check out the front of the car, we have that classic look on the front. This does have a opening hood, which is cool. And then inside here, we do have quite a bit of space where you can hold stuff inside of it. If we go to the back of the engine area, we have the, the cooler jets that you've seen in the movie, as well as the classic license plate out of time. And then inside the engine compartment, this one here is from the first movie. So it's more, less detailed and it has the lightning rod connector up here on top that leads into the engine to get it that 1.21 gigawatts of power to get it back to the future. We'll just use the hoverboard here as a little stand to hold up the door while we get some interior shots. Inside the interior of the car, you do have the normal details of the flux capacitor, which does light up with a light function cube, which is awesome to see as well as in the front dashboard, you have the control panels to be able to set where you wanna go in the past, future, or present, as well as the steering wheel. It's not a functional steering wheel, but we'll see why in a bit. The seats look great, uh, proportions and styling in that gray. Underneath the front hood area, we do have space to put in the hoverboard as well as a plutonium case. When you do remove the hoverboard, which does have a sticker on there for the hoverboard, there is a stud for it to hold in place, as well as when you take out the plutonium case, there is some studs there to hold that in place as well. And then when we go to open the plutonium case, there are two plutonium rods in there to be able to power the time machine. One thing I really enjoy about this car is how the fine details, where there are very minimal gaps along the side of the car, as well with the doors down here. You can barely tell that there's a door there that opens, which is fantastic. The printed wheel caps look great as well. And that iconic front end of the DeLorean. Now I have decided to leave the DeLorean in the Back to the Future Part 1 movie, but there is a special feature on here if you did want to create it into the Part 2 movie, which is the little switch here that does articulate the wheels into a hover mode. When you put it on the table, there are four two by four bricks in TransClear to be able to hold it off the ground of the table. Now, if you do decide you wanted the part two movie, as you saw in the beginning, there are some extra parts and pieces to be able to do that. You get the classic plate for the part two movie in the orange and metallic color plate, as well as you get to, do, to build the Mr. Fusion 
which is what was allowed to power the DeLorean time machine in part two. And this does open up and inside you do have a pop can and a banana, just like they did in the movie with Doc Brown putting that into the car. Now, part three was your favorite movie. You have the ability to convert the car into that as well, where this part here is straps onto the hood of the car when it was on the train tracks. And then you can't have a car on train tracks unless you have train wheels, which they've also included. It's an extra set of rims uh, that would clip right onto the wheels to be able to roll on a set of train tracks to make sure it travels from past to present. Let me know down in the comments which was your favorite Back to the Future car, if it was the one from part one, part two, or part three. And if you enjoyed this review, make sure you smash that thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.